Every living thing on the planet has been created by a series of instructions known as genes. One particular set of these instructions makes trees. Another makes cows. Still another makes humans. But now scientists have discovered it's possible to shuffle the pack. We can take a gene from one species and put it into another, creating extraordinary new creatures that work for us in ways we've never seen before. And Olivia's about to meet one. It's part mammal, part arachnid. I've always liked spiders. They are so beautiful, elegant and strange. And their silk is one of the strongest substances known to man. Oh, you can see a bit of silk hanging out behind. Dragline silk, which a spider uses to make the spokes of its web, is tougher than Kevlar, stretches better than nylon, and weight for weight is five times stronger than steel. She's got such lovely hairy legs. It's believed a cord of silk just a few centimeters across could lift a jumbo jet off the ground. But despite these remarkable properties, it's always been impossible to produce spider silk on a commercial scale. Unlike silkworms, spiders are too antisocial to farm successfully. People have actually tried in both Britain and France in the 1800s to grow spiders in, in barns. And they're very territorial and they actually will kill each other to get enough territory. But now Professor Randy Lewis thinks he's come up with a way to change all that. What we've done is taken the gene for spider silk from a spider and we've incorporated that into the genes of a goat. And the goat produces that silk protein in its milk. Yes, you did hear that correctly. He has put a spider gene into a goat. So how do you, how do you take a gene from, from this creature and, and put it into a goat? Well, in this case, because we want to make sure that we had the right gene, since they make different kinds of silk, we actually went to the gland that produces the dragline silk and we extracted the gene from there that was actually being made, so we knew it was the right one. To create a spider goat, Professor Lewis took the gene that allows the spider to make silk and put it into bacteria. As the bacteria multiply, so does the gene. The bacteria are then injected into the egg of a goat. When the egg develops, the gene allows the new goat to produce the proteins that make silk. You don't, you don't notice that there's anything peculiar about the goats in any other respect? We don't see any differences in the goat, and the goats behave absolutely normally. Extracting the silk from goats is a tricky process. The spider gene allows the goats to produce the proteins that are the building blocks of silk in their milk. There are many other proteins in milk, and this new gene adds just one more. Scientists filter the goat's milk to isolate the silk proteins, and then comes the delicate part. How do you actually make it into fiber? So what we've done is loaded the syringe with the spider silk protein in solution into this particular syringe. What'll happen is, is that the instrument then very slowly pushes down on the syringe, which forces the silk solution into an alcohol. What happens is, is, as the fiber starts to form, then we can actually pull it. From here, and take it up out of the solution, and then start winding it on these winders so that we have a silk fiber that we actually can begin to test. It looks like a, a sort of a giant version of the spooling part of my mother's old sewing machine. Very similar. We spool it on um, to collect enough silk that we can actually do testing. For the first time ever, it might be possible to make spider silk in bulk. From a liter of milk, we can actually get about seven grams of silk. As and at about 100 meters per, per milligram, we're talking about in excess of 70,000 meters of silk. So I'm, I seem to, seem to be holding a piece of spider silk that has come out of a, come out of goat's milk. It's extraordinary. It is actually quite stretchy. It's like, but it's fine, like the very finest hair on a baby's head. The technology is pretty nifty, 
But why would we want to produce spider silk on an industrial scale? I think things divide into a couple categories. In the medical field, people are particularly interested in artificial ligaments and artificial tendons. And well, people are interested in it for body armor, particularly the military is very interested because we estimate that we could make bulletproof vests that would be about one-third the current weight. So somewhere around five pounds versus 16 pounds of the current ones. It says so much about the fundamental evolution of life that you can take a gene from a spider and put it into a goat and it works. And it works perfectly. It's amazing.